Okay, now in this section, we are going to learn, start with a static routing uh, before we go back mm -hmm. to the next other types of routings. So if you remember in the previous session, we discussed there are three types of routings, static routing, default routing and dynamic routing. So the first kind of routing which we are going to learn here will be static. Now static routing is manually configured by the administrator. So if you remember, where we, we took one diagram where you have two possible routes to reach from A to E. So the route will be decided by the administrator. Administrator will decide the best route. If I say go via B, always the packet will go via B. If I say go via C, always it goes via C. But don't tell both the routes, you have to tell any one route. So assume that I'm using go via this route. Okay. So administrator manually configure the route. That's the first point and mandatory need for the destination network ID, now, which means as an administrator, you must know what is the network you're using in the LAN. So what is the network? Let's say there is a network called uh, 50 door network. You must know the destination network ID. So you must know the destination network ID. You must know the destination submit mask. Okay, so you must know what is the destination network ID and to reach that destination network, how many possible routes are there? And out of these two routes, which is the best route and that best route has to be decided by the administrator. Okay, so which means administrator must have a clear idea and a clear picture of how you are connected and administrator must have the information of each and every possible route so that he can decide to reach the destination, which is the best route. So the good thing about the static route is secure. Secure, why? Because uh, it is something given by the administrator and it is it, it will do fast because the router do not need to calculate the best route. The best route is something pre-calculated by the administrator. But there are major disadvantages in the static routing is it is majorly applicable for small size organizations. Now why because let's take an example here. Uh, on the router A, you need to tell how to go to B, you need to tell how to go to C, how to go to D, how to go to E. Similar way, you need to go to router B, you need to tell how to go to A, how to go to C, how to go to D and how to go to E. And then you need to tell from the router E, you need to tell how to go to A, how to go to C, how to go to D and how to go to a B router. Like that, on each and every router, you need to configure the route for each and every destination. Similar way. You need to configure the route for each and every destination. So the more bigger the size of the network, the more number of manual static route commands we need to add. That is something not scalable. So if you have five to 10 routers, five to 10 branches, static routing, maybe you can, you can go ahead and configure that, but it is really not applicable for big size networks. And that is one of the major disadvantage you applicable for the smaller networks and everything has to be configured manually by the administrator. So manually, we need to add the route from A to B, A to C, A to D, and A to E, like that on each and every router, we must configure the route for each and every destination. And the one more disadvantage is network changes affect the complete network. Network changes means, let's say, I decided that from router A to router E, I need to go via this route. This is the route which I want to use. But suddenly due to some reason, this router B is down or maybe the link is down. There is some problem. So the route which is given by the administrator router tries to forward the packet on that particular route, but it will get dropped because there is a problem. So which means it will totally affect the communication between the router A and the router E because the route which is given by the administrator, it is down. In this scenario, manually the administrator has to change the route. And that is something manually, manual changes. And what if any new network is added, new router is added. Now this new router information you have to add on each and every router. And also on this router you have to add the information of each and every other routers. So any new network is added or any specific link goes down, it's going to be very difficult for the administrator to manually add the route. Uh, and even if the route is given, if that route goes down, then manually changing, it's not an easy job. So that makes uh, static routing not much applicable or not much used in the production networks. We prefer to go with dynamic routing where uh, most, of the, most of the process is automatic. Uh, we'll get into that more in detail. 
but these are the major disadvantages which makes static routing not much applicable in the production networks so more on this administrative distance i'll be getting into that uh, more in detail i have a separate uh, class dedicated for distancing on administrative distance i'll i'll discuss that with examples but this is what a static routing uh, will do here and to configure static routing we need to go to uh, config mode we must be in the config mode when you define the destination network id destination submit mask and next stop ip address so we'll see more on this like how to configure with a with a basic example in our next section